Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for this Q&A session with KHD. With me I have the company's Director of Process Innovation, Norbert Streit, and Andreas Hand, who works in the field of Pyro Solutions Technology. Glad to have you here with us today, gentlemen. Uh, how are you both? Fine, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Excellent. also fine. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for taking the time to be with us here today um, and go through some of these questions that we have lined up for you. So without further ado, let's get right into it with our first question. What would you say were the main advantages of the pyro rotor compared to combustion systems available from the competition? Uh, I would like to mention three aspects here. The first aspect, the pyro rotor is able to burn a wide range of alternative fuels which are currently available on the market, including complete tires. No or only minimal pre-processing of alternative fuels therefore is required. And a second point is process related. The principle of combustion in a rotary or rotating drum is the main advantage. By circulating the fuel components, permanently reactive surfaces are created, which clearly favor the combustion process compared to static processes. As a result, the residence time of the fired material in the reactor is shorter, approximately 0.3 to 3 RPM, which means that the pyrorotor technology is suitable for larger capacities compared to the competition. Or in other words, the volume of a pyrorotor is specifically smaller in relation to the amount of substitute fuel compared to other systems. And a third aspect is related uh, to the mechanical point of view. Uh, because the fuel, the fuel transport and the combustion process takes place in a proven rotary kiln technology. There are no mechanical components that are exposed to the heat or to the hot atmosphere. Furthermore, possible problems with build-ups or blockages due to slacks and sticky components are easier to handle. These would be three aspects why we see um, the pyro rotor uh, in favor uh, to competitor systems. Okay, thank you. And following up, many existing plants have outdated calcina systems. Are these suitable for retrofitting with a pyro rotor? Yeah, this is a good question, but also here various aspects have to be uh, taken into account. Uh, basically, the integration of a pyro rotor in an existing building, partially or outside, is possible. This is favored by the compact system dimensions of a pyro rotor. Of course, the specific requirements must be checked here. For example, additional loads, integration into the tertiary air duct, and the connection to the kiln inlet. The second point, uh, however, outdated calciner systems are often characterized by the fact that they do not have, have enough retention time and turbulence for the thermal by, uh, burnout. In this case, KHD plans the pyro rotor as a complete unit in conjunction with a modern flash tube calciner. What is the nitrogen oxide emission level for two references in China without ammonia injection so there we have to be very honest uh, up to now we cannot give a proven nox emission level for the pyroredox without ammonia injection the simple reason for that is that we respectively our customer we are not allowed by the local authority to stop stop the sncr system and this was because our commissioning was done in January last year. And during winter time, as usual in this Henan uh, province, uh, the pollution level is very, the air pollution level is very high. And for that reason, no cement plants are allowed to operate at all. The two modified plants, Waihui and Chengdeng, 
had an exemption expressly granted by the public authorities, which was only valid if the emission level would be always below 100 or afterwards later on below 50 milligrams. And this situation didn't change up to now. And uh, so we are still in the, in the situation that we have to operate without. Of course, we have measured levels of NOx along the Calcina and the Pyredox inside the system. But this is not the emission level. This is a normal uh, concentration inside the, the system. And here we get the clear indication that after the uh, calcina, we have a NOx level. If you calculate this to the related oxygen level that we can achieve the 200 mic uh, milligram NOx per normal cubic meter safely. OK, thank you. As pyroredox is a module added to an existing calcina, uh, significant additional loads have to be taken on by the preheater tower. How can this problem be solved via a retrofit project? So in our concept, there is no significant change in loads for the existing civil structure. The additional loads are all taken by a new steel structure which is erected in front of the preheated tower above the kiln. In general, our engineers are very experienced in modification projects, and they always find solutions to arrange the new equipment into the existing structure with minimized efforts for civil changes. That's why this important work is still done from our specialist in Cologne, and is normally based on a 3D scan of the existing tower. OK, thank you. And I think that about wraps it up for all the questions we have for you today. So thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to be with us here and answer those questions. I'd also like to thank everyone who registered and attended today's session. I know the pandemic has made schedules a little bit hectic, so we really do appreciate people attending these events. If you have any more questions, you can get in touch via the contact details on your screen now. So thank you again, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.